before we get started, we have to completely form the tang to its final geometry so that the pommel and the guard will be at their final locations, allowing for some tension. Let's get started with that real quick. And welcome back to what is going to be basically the last discrete segment of Scalagrin's fashion. And that is the handle. Uh, today what I hope to accomplish is finish doing the woodwork that will be the base for the handle. And as you can see, this is all set up. And maybe we'll get to wire wrapping. Now, I am certain that you will see the wire wrapping if you are curious about how it's done in detail. Please check out the Your Edge episode where John shows in fairly great detail how to do that job. So I will not focus on the wire wrapping, but I will focus on setting up the proper wood handle for a sword, knife or dagger using basically the most traditional methods in that minimum use of power tools. I have my whole setup full of planes, or the two that I need, and wood chisels to hollow out all the wood for it. I will start out making the handle from this board of maple. It comes out straight from Home Depot. Where is our sponsor? I haven't heard one yet. Now, uh, what you need to do is make sure that your grain is straight along this way. Uh, Matt will tell you any trip to select wood at Home Depot is somewhat of a nightmare for him because I end up pulling out the whole entire rack out on the ground to find the one board that will be okay it's true now <laughs> what you need to also have is a tool that where is it oh there it is you need to have this fairly simple tool if you have a woodworker's bench you're fortunate not everybody has one what it is it's the other half of this board uh, the one where the green goes crookedly and I glued on a little shelf right here What this will do is this becomes my woodworks bench I lean it onto a solid surface and if I'm using a wood chisel I put my piece like that and Carve this way if I'm using a traditional Japanese plane I put it on the opposite side and carve this way minding the tips of the fingers so let's first get started with measuring the proper length. Uh, one thing you always have to consider, the wood, being a natural material, is very responsive to changes in temperature and humidity, and you have to account for that. Uh, most of the time, it will completely depend on your experience, as I will not be able to tell you which particular wood you're using and what you have to do with it. All I know is what is good in my local area with the wood I have and even then sometimes. However, since we're planning on a wire wrap for this handle, a lot of those problems go away as the wire wrap basically keeps your entire handle intact, which was the original purpose. What the wire wrap does is if your wood breaks underneath, the solid metal wire basically holds it together. So let's begin first by measuring the proper length and then get started on some wood carving. The first thing we do is place all the parts into their position. Be mindful that whether you have a pinned or screwed on pommel, this distance right here on the tang will shorten as you tighten your pommel on. However, 
this is exactly then a margin of error. So this guard is as tight on as it can get. So its final position will be somewhere around here. And this guard is, uh, and the pommel is, as far as I can push it with my fingers. I expect it to move about two millimeters or one sixteenth of an inch or so in, which will account for the necessary tension in the wood and will compensate for the wood shrinking over time. Although the wood does not shrink as much lengthways to the grain as opposed to sideways, it is still important to keep that in mind. So we have it right here and let's measure it. Assuming that this is correct, we have about three inches and one eighth will be the length of our wood. About that. So we take our board. Keep in mind that the grain where you're using it has to be straight and you can see it like this. All right, so this is the grain here is straight and this is the only usable section of this entire board for a handle. There are other ways of compensating for the grain that's not straight but that's at a later time. So picking up the pencil three inches and one eighth like this. One, assuming that this is fairly straight, which will be very important. Okay, does it look about right? Looks about right. Now, what is important, this looks awfully tiny right here, but with a lot of European swords, the pommel is part of the handle. You see that? So actually you can fit one and a half hands in here, really. So let's cut this piece off, measure an exact partner to it, and do that as well. Now, I did not cut it off all the way for a very specific reason, to make the uh, hollowing out faster and easier. Because the length of the wood is so small, it's somewhat of a pain in the ass to hold a small piece and then use the sharp chisel and get frustrated and cutting yourself. So I'm going to cut two pieces that are attached but still separated by this little cut and you'll see how it will be advantageous later on. So. Okay, here and on the other side.
probably some work to this. Probably. And now it's time to glue the two halves together. Uh, you can use any glue uh, in our case because uh, we have time constraints. I'm using the Gorilla Epoxy sponsor. Please sponsor us. Uh, it is a fantastic glue, one of the best if you're our sponsor. Um, and the key point to this is two. Uh, prepping of the surfaces, which I'm going to do now, uh, which includes also alignment. You don't want to glue your handle like that and then wonder why the tank doesn't fit. So you have to align them as you glue the pieces together. Um, and the other point is uh, patience. So let's make some epoxy. One of the important points is when you're epoxying two halves of a handle or a scabbard together, uh, you don't apply the glue to the entire glued surface, but right away from where you want to clean pass through. I'll show you. Okay, so. Okay, so. So I'm cutting into the top surfaces of the wood, that way the flowing epoxy has something to flow into, it's uh, creating a velcro-like effect which increases the quality of the seam. So I'm leaving about four to five millimeters uh, empty space between my carbon and my glue because as soon as I apply pressure, the glue will occupy that space. However, you don't want it to leak into your cavity, giggity. together one two three and the exact thing I didn't want it to do but that's okay now here's the secret technique I'm going to find WD-40. Or WD-40 for any oil. And I'm going to spray my tank richly. WD-40 does not stick to epoxy. And now my tang will not stick to the epoxy, meaning I can do a good job gluing it. One, I'm going to let it sit for five minutes and then pull out the blade. Uh, five minutes shouldn't be enough for the entire epoxy piece to set, but it's going to be way harder than it is now. And hopefully the epoxy will release 
uh, the tank. If it doesn't, uh, Scalagram will have to deal with a very silly falchion. We'll include the guard and the pommel as a separate package. And now is the final stage of uh, shaping the wood for the handle. Uh, I cheated a little bit and used Matt's really dull wood saw blade, that's why the sides are burnt, to remove most of the mass. Uh, because the tool is a little bit old, it is unsafe to cut this side. Uh, and the only reason why I cheated a little bit is to save a little bit of time. Most of the actual shaping work will be done with this little plane, as well as later on a file. In order to do this efficiently, I made this little fake tang, onto which the blade, oh, onto which the handle slides on fairly nicely. and comes out. So, now let's begin. Right. The way this plane works, uh, I actually have not removed the label off it, so if someone reads kanji and hiragana, you can get this for about nine to ten dollars. This is one of the best planes I've ever bought. It is very simple. There's just a blade and a block of wood. The way you adjust the depth of your cut is by tapping either on this side or on this side. And the blade using inertia slides in and out and it's fixed with tension. Be careful not to damage the wood on it. Now, because it's a Japanese plane, what you do, you pull instead of push. And seeing that I have my fake tank being fairly long, the procedure is very pleasurable. So the key is to have the blade just right, and it will be very enjoyable. Oh, блять, нахуй! Какого хуй? This is the leftover stainless steel twisted wire from the Inquisitor Sword, the My Blade Show 2019 project. Unfortunately, parts of it is still hard, as stainless steel work hardens very, very much. So what we'll have to do is anneal it. In order to do that, Matt will have to turn on his forge at home. We'll just throw this in there, let it heat up till red, and cool it down slowly. And Hopefully, this will be soft enough to make a wire-wrapped handle.
In order to prep the handle for the wire, it's necessary first to make a mixture of epoxy and anything black, like scale or, in our case, charcoal. The reason being the wood is white, basically, and it will show too much through the in-between of the wire. Once you cover it in black and then put the wire on top, not only with the mixture of epoxy and charcoal hold a little bit tighter together while you're completing your procedure, but also in the final product you don't see the unsightly white shining through. In fact, more, uh, in fact, a lot of munitions grade rapiers and swords that had a wire wrapped handle were after the wire wrap covered in pitch and that thing was scraped all the way off till you see the wire. So, you see, so when in museum you see a very dank handle with a lot of gunk in it, that's usually intentional. So this is my contraption for making wire wrapped handles. This is my personal hodgepodge design. If you want to see more of how a machine like this works, check out the wire wrapped handle episode of Your Edge, where John shows in detail how wire wrapped handles are produced. Now I'm affixing my handle to my contraption. Big bolt on everything. We'll mix <clears throat> some epoxy with some charcoal. Alright. The goal is to have black goo. stirrer stick you're using there. Okay, the stirrer stick is perfect for manufacturing black goo. Okay, so let's take the spatula. Doesn't have to be super even, but it has to be even ish. So I drilled holes earlier, and now I am affixing my wire into those holes. Second one goes here. So 
Boom. Boom. And like this. Boom. All right. So once everything is tight, this is going to be the general overall look of the foul room. Skeleton. Alright, so this concludes the final stage of the vlog series of making Phalogram. Uh, there's a little bit more work that you will not get to see in the vlog, but we'll see in the final cut, which will include Scalograms, demo, so on and so forth. The stuff that's necessary are two bronze or silver caps that trap the wire. Those are usually very nice. Uh, antiquing of all the pieces, a little bit of hand sanding here and there, and the final sharpening. The other thing that needs to happen is thread at least this much of the tang so that it, will, it can have a pin block right here. Other than that, it is a fairly sincere version of the Italian fashion, uh, which we used as the founding piece for this project. This has been a very interesting project. I always wanted to make a sharp version, a sincere version of an Italian fashion, as I really like upper class weapons. Uh, the next thing about this is to get it to Scalagrim. Uh, it will be waiting for him once he completes his move. I'm excited to see what he will do with it and which uh, Hema moves and techniques will work on a specifically Italian fashion. Um, Stay put, there will be a final edited version of the entire project on the channel. I cannot tell you when it will be, but it will happen. And there will be some unreleased, unshown footage in it. Stay tuned. Don't forget to like the video. And as always, we ask you to consider subscribing to That Works.